stories of a Savior and holiness with human hands a treasure for the traitor no ear had heard no eye had seen the image of the Father Till heaven came to live with me A rescue like no other Yes, you are worthy You are worthy of your name Yes, you are worthy Yes, you are Lord Sing it out, you did not speak. You did not speak, you made no sound. You died for your accusers. It's as your blood fell to the ground. You redefine my future. Oh, and on the day that you arose, your darkness ran for cover. For the King of Kings has claimed his throne. And now and still forever, sing you are this. that's not the right one you can take it down it says you God are my God earnestly I seek you I thirst for you my whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water I have seen you in the sanctuary I beheld your power and your glory because your love is better than life my lips will glorify you I will praise you as long as I live and in your name, I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the riches of all foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. I read this, and I see at the beginning of this passage, it says, You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being belongs to you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water, I see a God that is necessary for living. I see a God that, that without that God, that we would be nothing. God is the water in a dry and parched land. God is something we earnestly seek for. 
He's someone we praise, where we lift our hands, where we be, we're fully satisfied, as he, if he were the richest of foods. <laughs> Singing comes from our mouths. So in worship, I, I always think about this, the term of vulnerability. When Would you say that, that worship itself is giving of yourself to worship a God who is we thirst for, who we long for? We earnestly seek Him. We thirst for Him. We long for Him. We raise our hands. Singing comes from our lips. We are vulnerable to the Holy Spirit during worship. So imagine you're in a conversation with God. Imagine you're standing there talking to Him. This is a God who knows you. This is a God you worship. This is a God you praise. So what does, whenever you're in a conversation with somebody, what does your arms crossed when you're talking to somebody mean? Anybody got any, anybody got any answers for that? It means you're, you're either closed off, you're nervous, you're, you're, you're worrisome. What does hands in your pockets kind of convey when you're talking to God? You're talking to Him. You're talking to God. You're having a conversation with the Lord, our God, our Savior in heaven. What, what is hands and pockets? I mean, I think God is more worthy. He is more worthy of our hands and our pockets. No offense to anyone out there. I'm going to ask you something extreme. I'm going to ask you to put yourself in a position of vulnerability towards God, towards the Holy Spirit to move into you, to move into your life, to to bring you into a state of worship, uh, a state of vulnerability that we just read in the scripture, that we raise our hands. It, this, this, is not, this is not something that you have to do, but I'm asking you if you would put yourself in a, in a state of vulnerability, whether it be your hands to your side, whether it be your hands out in front of you, whether it be your hands raised. But when we sing this next part, that he is our author, he is our maker, he is everything to us. We are thirsty for him. We long after him. We search after him. He is our water in a dry desert. Put yourself in a position of vulnerability, a position of praise, a position of worship towards our God, our Savior. Sing with us. You're my author. Because you're my author, my maker, my ransom, my Savior my refuge my hiding place and you're my helper my healer my blessed redeemer my answer my saving grace you're my hope and you're my hope in the shadows my strength in the battle my anchor for all my days See you. 